got a big problem with the head sail. Uh, something's happened. Uh, the tack is disconnected. Um, I'm not sure why, so I'm going to go out on deck and figure out what's going on. I think I'm going to need to put another piece of webbing, sew it on there, and wrap it around and sew it on there. Yeah, that's a ticket. Uh... Welcome to another episode of Paragon's Favorite Stuff, where we show you all of the things that we love to have aboard our 42-foot sailboat named Paragon. In today's episode, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools for sewing projects. It's called the Speedy Stitcher. I'll show you how it works, I'll tell you why I think it's so great, and then I'm going to use it to repair a torn webbing strap that's holding the tack of our head sail to the roller furler. <laughs> Over the years, I've made lots of repairs to sails and canvas using a needle and a sewing palm to push the needle through the material, but I've discovered that in a lot of cases I can save a lot of time by using the Speedy Stitcher instead. The Speedy Stitcher Sewing All is a hand tool for sewing lock stitches into any kind of heavy material like sails, canvas, leather, or vinyl fabrics. It's really handy for when you don't want to take the whole sail or canvas down and bring it down into the cabin to make the repair with the sewing machine. Instead, a lot of the time I can just use the speedy stitcher on deck to make the repair into the sail or canvas without having to take the material down. It's also great for when you want to make a repair to a part of a sail that's impossible to get into the sewing machine. In that case, you have to do it by hand and this tool makes it so much easier. Here's the speedy stitcher. If you remove this chuck, then you have access to these two needles that are stored inside. One needle is straight and the other needle has this curve on the end. I've never used one with a curve, but the instructions say that it's better for use in tight spaces. Both of these needles are proprietary to the speedy stitcher because there's a groove going along the length of the needle here that the thread or twine goes through, as you'll see in a moment. On the bottom of the speedy stitcher, there's an end cap. If you remove that, then you can take this bobbin out. You load the bobbin up with twine. Feed the twine through this hole in the handle. Put the bobbin in the speedy stitcher and put the end cap back on. Feed the twine through this hole. Put the needle in the post and send the twine through the eye in the needle. You have to make sure that the thread is laying in this little groove that's in the post and also through the groove in the needle as well. Put the chuck on. If you don't get the twine to go through the groove in the post, then when you tighten the chuck down, the twine won't be able to pass freely through it. As you can see, you can pull the thread through the chuck like this. Now it's all loaded up and ready to sew with. Before I go out on deck to repair our head sail, I'm going to show you up close how the Speedy Stitcher works by sewing through these four layers of jeans fabric. I'm going to use a few needles to keep the four layers of fabric together while we're sewing through it. Then I'll mark the fabric with a piece of chalk to show where my stitch line is going to be. So this is going to be my stitch line, the length of my stitch line, and the first step is to pull out the amount of twine that you're going to need for the length of your stitch. Push the needle through the fabric at the beginning of your stitch line. Pull the loose end of the twine 
all the way out to the other side and pull the needle back out. Now we just have our twine going through the needle and then through the fabric. To make our first stitch, I'll push the needle back in through the fabric, a little bit down along our stitch line from the first hole. Then on the other side, I'll pull it out slightly and that'll create the loop opening in the twine next to the needle point. You then take the end of the twine and put it through that loop. Pull it through and then pull the needle back out of the fabric. Tighten up on each end and that's our first lock stitch. From here it's just repeating that same process, going down a little bit along our stitch line, sending the needle through, pulling it back a little bit to create that loop, sending the end of the twine through that loop, pulling the needle back out, and pulling the two ends together. One great thing about the Speedy Stitcher is that you've got this big wooden handle to push through the heavy fabric. And uh, sometimes it can be really hard to push the needle through the fabric, but with the handle, you've got all the leverage you need to force it through the fabric pretty easily. When you're done with your stitch line, then you can finish it up by pushing the needle back through the fabric and then cutting the twine, pulling the needle back out, and you're left with these two ends right here, which you can just tie together in a square knot. Then I'll use my soldering gun to melt that square knot down so that it will never come apart. There. And there you have it. This lock stitch is very similar to the type made by a sewing machine, and I'm sure it's just as strong. Now I'm gonna show you how you can also use a speedy stitcher to sew zigzag lock stitches. Sails are traditionally sewn with zigzag stitches because they distribute the strain across the sail better than straight stitches do. I'll start out by drawing two parallel lines to use as a guide. Chalk doesn't do too good, but good enough. I'll start out by pulling out the amount of twine that I think I'll need for the stitch, and then sending the needle through the material at the start of where I want the stitch to be, pulling out the loose end of the twine, and then pulling the needle back out. Now, because this is gonna be a zigzag stitch, instead of going down the one line, I'm going to go across to the other line, a little bit down, and send it through. Pull it back until I've got that loop. Send the twine through the loop and pull it. Pull it tight. And now, go back over to the first line, send it through, and repeat the process. Now I'll end the zigzag stitch. Got the two ends here. And just tie them together in a square knot. There's your hand-sewn zigzag stitch made so much easier with the speedy stitcher. Now let's go fix that torn webbing on our head sail. I think I'm going to need to put another piece of webbing. Sew it on there and wrap it around and sew it on there. Yeah, that's a ticket. All I've got aboard the boat is this. You can sew it on right there and then wrap it up. So this on there, I'm going to cut this to 
the same width as this webbing. And then for a length, I think we'll want it to be about that long. So not too long. From there, there. All right, let's go cut it and see what it looks like. Where I cut it, it's easily gonna fray and come apart. So I'm going to melt it with my little soldering iron. Yeah, just melting it so that it doesn't fray apart. Good enough. I'm gonna fray apart. I think that'll work. Let's go see what it looks like. So that on there, and then also that on there, and then we'll be good to go. In today's episode, I'm going to show you my soldering iron. Okay, looks good. Sew it on like that. And sew it on there like that. I'm just going to use some needles to hold it in place. crossing the zigzag stitch. I will do two more zigzags back and forth. This is working out good so far. I hope it's going to be as easy once I join the loop. Now those ends will never come apart. the beginning. Looks good. And there we go. That's it. Just got to get the shackle on there and we are ready to go back to sea. I hope you enjoyed checking out our speedy stitcher. If you did, then please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Next, we're going to sail from the Faroe Islands back to Scotland and then continue on to Ireland, Portugal and Morocco. So please stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.